Welcome to Big Z Sports presentation of high school basketball play-by-play coverage. Tonight in this IBC matchup, the Claymont Mustangs host the Indian Valley Braves. Tonight's game is presented by Parkway Quick Lane, Tusker Rawless Insurance Agency, Altman Hospital, Wood Electric, Ferris Chevrolet Buick Toyota, DAC Vitamins and Minerals, Ron's Heating and Cooling, and First National Bank of Denison. Now, let's head courtside to the PAC Drilling Mobile Studio with Nick McWilliams. Welcome into Eurexville with Big Z Sports. It is now time for the Wood Electric pregame show. The matchup tonight is from the IVC, and it's going to be a heck of a matchup. The Indian Valley Braves are in town to take on the Claymont Mustangs in an all-important rivalry matchup. Good evening, everyone. As, uh, thank you if you are tuning in again from the Big Z Sports show earlier on tonight. Uh, talking about all the uh, high school sports that were going on uh, throughout the area. This is going to be our featured game tonight, but some of the other stuff that is uh, going on, some of the other matchups we'll try to get updates for on the Big Z Sports Facebook page. Canaan Valley meets Newcomerstown, Strasburg meets East Canton, TCC takes on Malvern, Ridgewood is against Sandy Valley, and Tusky Valley matches up against Garraway. But this contest features the 9-5 and five Indian Valley Braves and the 6-9 and nine Claymont Mustangs. Both these sides did meet earlier on this season. 60-46 to 46 was the victory for Indian Valley. That was played at Janate and Hutton. But we do know Shannon Thomas, the Claymont Mustangs, they've been playing well at home, and uh, they play a lot. It seems like they play grittier at home, too, and that's something that Indian Valley has to be aware of. Yeah, two big wins at home. They, this is their house. You're going to come in here and protect it. And 
and you really want to protect against your rivals. So it's going to be good to see if the Mustangs can get up for this game and, you know, beat the Braves tonight. Absolutely. And uh, over to Aaron Stump now joining us. Uh, I got to say, in between games, we completely forgot about this, but we wanted to wait until after it was done, so didn't tip him off or anything. Jim Carruthers got honored here tonight, and if you are not from the Claymont uh, community, the Uricksville area, Twin City area, you might not be aware of this. Jim, 50 years of service when it comes to uh, the basketball teams. He's been running the scores table as an announcer, clock operator, and other duties that they can find for him at the scores table <laughs> for 50 years. Wow. And the uh, Claymont Athletic Department wanted to give him uh, some recognition. They honored him for his 50 years of service, gave him a plaque. Uh, going out there was head coach Gary Watkins and athletic director Justin Jones just offering their thanks uh, for his unbelievable dedication to this community. So for Jim Carruthers, his entire family, a big congratulations and uh, a big thank you. We need people like that to dedicate their time to high school sports. Yeah, it's just not possible without those people. So the, the people like Jim Carruthers, again, who, who put time in day in, day out. Uh, it, it's amazing how you go to these schools and you have a core group of really dedicated volunteers. And uh, for those schools who are lucky to have, have individuals like this, again, uh, value them deeply because they are very uh, vital to uh, the, the entertainment that is provided by high school sports. And uh, I'm sure uh, the AD here is uh, very, very appreciative of all the time that he puts in and uh, his dedication to uh, Claymont Sports. Absolutely. Well, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, move right along with our pregame show. JV game got done quick, so we're going to be moving right along here. Awesome. First things first, we're going to go ahead courtside with the coach brought to you by Kime. On the docket is Indian Valley Braves head coach Tyrone Miller. Let's hear what he has to say. Followed up immediately by head coach Gary Watkins for the Claymont Mustangs. Big Z Sports is back after this. Hi, I'm Zach Motice with the Tuscross Insurance Agency. For all your auto, home, farm, and business insurance needs, contact our team at the Tuscross Insurance Agency or stop in and see us at one of our three locations in Sugar Creek, Strasburg, and downtown New Philadelphia, providing excellent service to the Tuscross Valley since 1885. Everyone here at the Tuscross Insurance Agency would like to wish all area athletes and teams good luck this fall. This is RJ Jacobs from DAC Vitamins and Minerals. Did you know that DAC Vitamins and Minerals has more than 40 proven equine supplements that include daily multivitamins, joint digestion, reproduction and fertility, calming, and many other specialty products? DAC also carries a complete line of livestock products called DAC Show Contender. Feed DAC Vitamins and Minerals to get the competitive edge in the show pen. We've been feeding champions since 1983. When struggles seem too tough, when sickness takes a hold, when cancer picks a fight, when baby's on its way, when life throws you a curveball, we've got you. With nearly 130 years in your backyard, Altman knows you and knows your community better than anyone. We're your neighbors, your friends, your family, and we want you to be the healthiest you can be. Altman, we are ready. We've got you. Welcome back to the Wilmington with the coach and kicking things off. It's Indian Valley Braves head coach Tyrone Miller. And uh, coach, you know, we've seen from the Braves so far this year, nine victories. You guys have had some really impressive outings. Tell me a little bit about uh, how your team's performing, maybe some of the areas you think you could improve upon. Yeah, you know, I feel like the second half of the year, we've really improved with our shot selection offensively. And we started to dig in a little bit better defensively. Um, and, and those are areas that you always want to improve on as the, as the season goes and you get to tournament time. And, and I think part of that happens naturally as you find out what kind of a team you have. So um, we want to see a lot of that same tonight. You know, We want to throw the ball inside to our, our big, strong post players, play inside out basketball. We want to dominate the boards on both sides of the floor and, and really dig in defensively and make anything, anything that Claymont gets tonight, we want to make it tough on them. Now, Coach, I was uh, running down through your schedule, five and two over your last seven, and we've talked many times about getting hot at the right time, especially with the uh, tournaments really right around the corner. Uh, how do you sustain that type of success as we go through the last few uh, tough couple of games for you guys? Yeah, you know, it's just about putting in the work every day, um, knowing that you're never a finished product, um, trying to get a little bit better each day, and, and that's what we've tried to preach. I felt like we had three of our best days of practice. Um, the last three days, you know, we were off Tuesday. We gave the guys off on Monday for Martin Luther King Day. 
And uh, I, I felt like they came back with some really good energy in practice this week. Um, and, and hopefully we see the results of that tonight. Now, Coach, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, though, but this is your first actual competition in about a week, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. So uh, any worries about maybe a potential layoff? I know you mentioned the practices you guys had, but nothing can uh, substitute for game speed. Yeah, you know, that's always a concern. But um, as we get to the, through the second half of the season, we, we start to try to get more mental reps, and, and we want to conserve legs as much as possible in practice. So uh, we went really hard Tuesday and Wednesday and then a little bit lighter yesterday just so that our legs are fresh for tonight. Because um, it's always a concern to get get dead legs at the end of the season. So we want to try to keep those guys as fresh as possible and just stay sharp mentally. Now, Coach, over your last 10, when it comes to playing the Indian Valley Braves, you guys are 7-3, and three, so obviously having some good success. However, we know the grittiness that Claymont does present, and that's been a problem for some uh, top teams in the IVC, including Garraway, naturally. Uh, you guys prepared for that physicality? Yeah, and, you know, they always play so much better here at home. So um, it, it's definitely something that we've prepared our guys for this week. But um, we got to, at the end of the day, we got to lace them up. We got to, you know, it's going to be a put your chin strap on and mouthpiece in. And, and it's, it's going to be one of those kind of games tonight. So uh, we know we're going to have to control the paint, control the boards. And when you can control the boards, especially against Claymont, you give yourself a good chance. But we're prepared for a pretty physical battle tonight. Finally, Coach, biggest key for your Braves to pick up a victory and improve to 10 wins on the season? Uh, just like most nights for us, offensively, we, we can't fall in love with a three ball. Um, we've got too many big, strong, athletic kids that need to be scoring the ball at the rim and not shooting it from 19 feet, nine inches. So um, if we can play inside out basketball, um, that's gonna be a, hu a huge key for us tonight. Perfect, Coach. Well, thank you so much and good luck to Indian Valley. All right, thank you. That was head coach for the Indian Valley Braves, Tyrone Miller, brought to you by Kime. Coming up, more of the Wood Electric pregame show and head coach for the Claymont Mustangs, Gary Watkins. Serving you, TMK is a name you trust. All the way with TMK, service with a personal touch. Hi, this is Phil with the Ford Parkway Quick Lane Service. When the vehicle that transports your team needs maintenance, you expect it to be done accurately and quickly so you can get back on the road. Don't get sidelined by your vehicle. When it comes to servicing your team's vehicle, let my all-star team at Parkway deliver you the winning combination to keep you on the road and safe for the long haul. Back into the Wood Electric pregame show, now courtside with the coach, brought to you by Kime, head coach for the Claymont Mustangs, Gary Watkins. And uh, coach, our third game uh, Big Z Sports has had with you guys. We were just joking before we started here. The pattern's been win, then loss. So I'm sure you're hoping the pattern continues. I like how you're thinking. Let's keep that pattern going. Good to have you here tonight. Now, uh, Coach, uh, first things first, um, we know the last game you guys had uh, against Maysville was a little bit of a rough outing, but before that, you had some really nice wins this season. Run me through how the year's gone to this point. High points, low points, which we know happened in basketball. Yeah, well, we tell the kids that all the time. There's ups and downs in basketball, and there's going to be runs. But we've liked how it was going until the Maysville game. We're trying to forget that. You brought it up, so I guess i got to talk <laughs> about it. But uh, we had three or four games before that that was really nice, uh, two or three in our favor. Uh, so we like that. We're just going to try to hopefully have short-term memory on that Maysville game. And uh, you said short-term memory on the Maysville game, the last three looking at that. Before that, a three-point loss to Carrollton, but we know those Carrollton Warriors are a tough team. Then a big win over Newcomers Town and a close one against Tusky Valley. Uh, tell me a little bit about that Tusky Valley game. Close down the stretch, uh, what was the difference maker in that? Well, we uh, made some shots like we talked about, and we just want to shoot the ball okay, and that was a good thing. We played some defense and we rebounded well, so that's a good combination. Now, looking at the Indian Valley Braves, we know it's an IVC showdown, but obviously uh, we also know the rivalry significance when it comes to this. Naturally, don't have to tell anybody listening either about that. Uh, first time you guys took them on this year, you were at Janate and Hutton, fell 60 to 46. If I'm not mistaken, though, it was a pretty close game. Yeah, well, we are up after the first quarter, but obviously you got to play more basketball than that. We had a really rough second quarter, and if you're only playing three quarters out of the night, that's not a good thing. 
Now, Coach, uh, this is a tough Indian Valley team, as we know, uh, but looking at the rest of the schedule after this, I'm, I'm curious because you play at Ridgewood, then at Sandy Valley, then at Garraway, three road games. So how does a test here at home against a physical team like the Braves are prepare you for that kind of road stretch? Every game in the IVC South, we think, is a, is a tough test, and you're not walking in any gym and going to chalk one up. So we got to come out and play. We got to take care of the ball. We got to rebound better than we did the first game against them, and obviously keep their shooters from thinking the basket's very big. Now, Coach, I was looking at the uh, last 10 games you had against Indian Valley, 3-7 and seven over that 10-game uh, period. Is there ever a uh, difficult or difficulty, I guess, trying to keep the kids more focused on, look, we haven't had a lot of great success with this team, but that doesn't mean anything. You come out and you play every night and you never know what happens. Yeah, we look at that. I don't know if the kids do, but we, we've talked about one of those games, a loss was an overtime, uh, another one was a couple point. So there are not a lot of big deficits in those games so we're competing and now we just got to do a couple of those things we mentioned and, and turn the tide for us finally coach uh, last question for you here what's going to be the key for the uh, mustangs to pick up an ivc victory well we said a couple keys to the game and i mentioned them already but taking care of the ball and we did that the first game we got to keep them off the boards which we didn't do the first game and again know where their shooters are and they got some guys that can put it in the hole awesome coach well thank you so much for your time and good luck to claymont thank you very much that was head coach for the Claymont Mustangs, Gary Watkins, brought to you by brought to you by Kime. Don't go anywhere. Big Z Sports wraps up the Wood Electric pregame show, and we have tip-off in the IVC after this. Is your vehicle banged up? Do you want fast, professional service to get you back on the road? This is Garrett Jacobs with Auto Works Collision Center. We service cars, trucks, SUVs, and even semi-trucks and RVs. Whether you need auto glass replacement, paintless dent repair, assistance with warranty and insurance, or just a free estimate, Auto Works has you covered. We even offer alignments for your heavy-duty vehicles like buses, motorhomes, and semis with our state-of-the-art Hunter Alignment System. Call 330-878-4223. Open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Let Auto Works of Strasburg work for you. See what uh, your keys are from this one. Uh, I was going to say for the Indian Valley Braves, you know, we've seen the success that they've had recently, 5-2 and two in their last seven. It's got to be keep that momentum and don't be intimidated by the rival and being away from home. As for the Claymont Mustangs, a uh, bit of a funk when it comes to playing against Indian Valley, 3-7 and seven in their last ten. They are coming off of a pretty bad loss against Maysville, 74-25. to 25. Uh, Coach Watkins said that they want to put that one behind them as quickly as possible. That's going to be their biggest key. Forget about the last game. Look at the opponent in front of you. Uh, and we always talk free throws are always a big thing. Uh, that, that seems to come down to it. And with both of these defenses, I, I think it's going to be the turnover battle. Whoever can win that tonight, get good quality possessions at this point, I think has got the uh, better chance of winning tonight. Absolutely. Well, uh, that will do it for the Needham Paul and company keys to the game. We'll be seeing, uh, checking in on those again uh, at halftime, see how they're going, and, of course, at the conclusion of the game to see how both teams have been responding to that as both teams are now leaving the court to stand on their sidelines as we're going to get our national an anthem underway. Coming out on the other side of this break, it's your Rosenberry Towing starting lineups before tip-off tonight between Claymont and Indian Valley. Don't go anywhere. High school basketball lives right here at 99.9 FM. The Fraternal Order of Eagles, Yorksville, Area 2264, is a proud supporter of local school programs and youth programs and local police and fire departments. The Eagles welcome you to enjoy live entertainment, kids' Christmas parties, kids' Halloween parties, and family picnics. To learn more about the Yorksville Eagles, they invite you to stop by and see how they are truly people helping people. Someone you know is already a member. 332 North Main Street in Yorksville, 740-922-9084. Wood Electric has been trusted with all of your electrical needs for over 30 years. They are the place to call for residential, commercial, and industrial work. Wood Electric is available 24 hours a day and ready to help with any electrical problem, outage, or installation. Wood Electric, serving Tuscarawas County and beyond since 1988. Like Wood Electric on Facebook or find them online at woodelectric.net. Is there anything better than high school sports? Hi, this is Pat Ferris of Ferris Chevrolet Buick and Toyota. High school sports bring out the best in our schools and in our communities, and the people at Ferris have always believed in the importance of athletics and academics. Just like we believe in the great cars and trucks we sell and service every day, like high school sports, we're a great tradition in this area. Ferris, on the Wabash in New Philadelphia. Think Ferris! 
Ron's Heating and Cooling in Denison has been serving this great area since 1977. At Ron's, no matter what your needs, they can handle it. From heating and cooling to standby Generac generators, water heaters, tankless water heaters, mobile home equipment, duct cleaning, and 24-hour no-heat service. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you have to do is call 740-922-5252. Ron's Heating and Cooling proudly supports high school sports and would like to wish best of luck to all local athletes participating this season. PAC Drilling, a family-owned and operated company since 2005 in Bolivar, takes pride in being an economic oil and gas drilling company. PAC's objective is to contribute to American energy independence through profitable development, operation, and marketing of oil and natural gas wells. PAC also employs operating technicians to oversee each and every well drilled to maximize its productivity and longevity. Contact PAC Drilling at PackDrilling.com. They got a six-foot senior, number four, Leo Wenger. They got a six-foot-three junior, number 10, Tyson Pryor. And most of the uh, plays tonight we'll see will run through Tyson tonight. Uh, he's had some monster games earlier this year. Six-foot-one sophomore, number 23, Isaac Klasner. And finally, the six foot two senior, number 32, Reese Colson, rounds them off. Thank you for that. And on to the home, Claymont Mustangs, a changed up starting lineup since the last time we've seen them here in Stump. Starting at guard number three, the sophomore, Drew Fox, followed by the junior, number 10, Dylan Watkins. Number uh, number 12, I should say, Jordan Connor. He's a junior. He gets the start. And senior, Graydon Mooneyham, number 13, starting. And the other change, uh, Number 14, Brody Moreland, the junior, also in the starting lineup. Uh, so see what their uh, thought process is there with that one, changing up their starting lineups a little bit, maybe looking for a spark, and why not against your rival? And again, it may be, uh, again, uh, Indian Valley doesn't have a lot of size, a lot of quickness uh, that might uh, help them match up a little bit better. And, uh, boy, here we go. Crowd's getting ready to get into this one now. They are getting into this one. Well, that tends to be what happens when it comes to Braves versus Mustangs. As you'd imagine, this is a old-school IVC rivalry. goes back years, and, you know, it's one of those rivalries. We think about it when it comes to the football field, but uh, there are no slouches when it comes to basketball either. That's yep. exactly why we expect it to be uh, – a hard-nosed basketball game for both sides. Uh, we'll see how much that's going to affect the game because, you know, sometimes it depends on the officiating crew you're going to get, how much they're going to let them play. You know, again, the IBC, again, has been it been an absolute blast to watch again this year, and, and it's it's you better come to play every game. And if you don't, you're going to get upset. And, and every game, uh, again, really comes down to those fundamentals. And uh, both of these teams climb up and down this year, and we'll, we'll kind of see how it goes. Absolutely. Well, that will... Wrap up the Wood Electric pregame show. It is now time for high school basketball in Z Country. Claymont, Indian Valley, getting ready for the tip-off. Again, a huge thank you to TMK Valley Propane, DAC Vitamins and Minerals, the Tuscarawas Insurance Agency, and Altman Hospital. They are bringing you this broadcast tonight, live from Eurexville. For the tip for the Braves, it's number 10, Tyson Pryor. For the Mustangs, it's number 12, Jordan Connor, and we are underway. It's won by Indian Valley. Leo Wagner quickly to Braden Troyer underneath, and he got hacked. And a foul, and it's going to be... On the parkway, quick lane drive to the basket. Foul going to go on number one. Well, it can't be number one. Hello. Three. Number three. Oh, I'm sorry. Number three. Yep. Drew Fox. His first team first, of course. Drew. Five seconds into this game. Drew Fox's <laughs> first foul. Last time we saw him uh, when they were taking on Strasburg, Fox came into the game, had some good minutes on offense, but unfortunately for him, though, got into foul trouble very early, and that pretty much uh, ended his night. First free throw from the Ferris Chevrolet free throw line, up and good for Braden Troyer. Second one on the way, and it is good as well. So it's a quick 2-0 lead for Indian Valley. Mustang's going to bring it up. It's going to be Brody Moreland who has it to orchestrate the Mustang offense. Again, a new look starting lineup for them. We'll see what difference uh, it makes on the offensive side of the ball. Jordan Connor has it now as he sets up the offense. He's guarded by Pryor. Stops and pops to the right side. Drive going to be for Mooneyham. He kicks it around. Ball makes its way to the top of the key. Drive for Brody Moreland, and it's good. A Parkway quick lane drive to the basket, and wow, that was soft touch for Moreland. Again, Claymont doing a nice job moving that ball. Um, again, getting the open shot and uh, putting it down. Indian Valley sets up the offense. Claster tries to go into Braden Troyer there, but they're going to get Drew Fox again. Second foul for him on the entry pass to Troyer. Must have had his hand on the back there a little bit too much. 
as uh, Shannon Thomas quickly down to you. I saw a head nod after I said that, so that must have been the problem. Yeah, Drew got his hand on his back. He reached around and made a nice job with the ball, but when he got his hand on his back, he turned him just a little bit. Thank you for that, Shannon Thomas. Leo Wanger has the ball for Indian Valley. Works it around to Troyer. Troyer now calling out his spots. Gets a screen from Colson. Looks to give it away to him underneath the baseline. He lost the handle and threw it away. First turnover of the ball game. It goes to Indian Valley, and it goes to Braden Troyer. Tell you, the few, few games we've seen Indian Valley play against, those silly, he gets caught up in the air and, again, doesn't know what to do with the ball. So, again, early in the game, I'm sure the nerves are rattling a little bit. Calm yourself down and uh, play on the next play. You need movement with a destination. Yeah, is sometimes where yep. the problem is. Mooneyham drives in. Tough shot, tough defense for Colson. He's going to grab the rebound for Indian Valley, and here come the Braves. First rebound for Colson. Braves setting it up now. Troyer has it. Goes to Klasner. Looks for an entry pass there to Colson. Decides not better of it. Dylan Watkins, good defense for the for the Mustangs. And this is where Indian Valley gets stuck a little bit sometimes. Not a lot of movement on offense right now. And that's going to have to improve. Ah, silly foul again. Over the back easily or uh, player control with the body. Whatever you want to call it, Jordan <laughs> Connor. Regardless, Jordan Connor's got his first foul of the game. Tyson Pryor... Uh, Almost gave him a piggyback ride. Well, I think those are the uh, fouls that frustrate Coach Watkins right now. Again, not a, really a hustle play, just kind of a senseless play. Pryor drives on the inbound, kicks it left side, and it's buried. Isaac Klasner gets his first shot of the game, and it's a 5-2 to two lead for Indian Valley. Yeah, just like Stump said, as soon as that foul was committed, Coach Watkins looked at him and said, that's a stupid foul. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, Shannon. Uh, Claymont with the ball, it's Watkins. Makes its way around to Moreland. Moreland guarded by Pryor again. He'll spin at the free throw line. Mid-range jumper all around the rim and it falls. Nice job by Brody Moreland. He gets his second basket of the game. Really impressed with both teams right now with their shooting coming now. And again, nice soft touches and uh, some tough shots uh, with some good defense on both sides. Here's a defense chance from the Claymont student section right to our right. As Troyer has the ball for Indian Valley, goes to Colson. Nice entry pass to Pryor, and it's off the glass and good. Tyson Pryor gets his first make of the game. Reese Colson gets his first assist, and that was a beautifully designed play. I Tyson has such nice body control under there, and again, just a junior, but again, a strong presence underneath with a nice soft touch. Drive now for Connor. Kicks it right side. Couldn't get the handle on it. Was Jackson who's checked into the game. He did work the ball to Watkins. Might have got away with the chicken wing there, but they didn't call it. Reese Colson grabs his first, his second rebound. Here comes Indian Valley. Watkins yeah. extending that arm a little bit. And Matthew Jackson who's checked into the game for Claymont. He'll draw Braden Troyer. Leo Wanger has the ball. Pryor now looking to go to Colson. Nothing there. Indian Valley just kind of working it back and forth now. Now they'll go cross court. Braden Troyer's three-point shot on the way. Off the rim, no good. Battle for it. Colson and Mooneyham were battling. Stays they are there. gonna say it went off of Mooneyham. Again, we talk about it every week. Again, the defensive end box outs are gonna be vital and uh, give them one shot, give Indy Valley too many shots, they're gonna keep scoring. Troyer has the ball and he's looking for somewhere to go with it. Finally gets it off to Klasner. Troyer resets the offense again. Four and a half to go in the first. Seven to four is the lead for Indian Valley. It's been a fun one so far. Claymont's done a nice job extending that defense to this point. And again, no easy points to this uh, good point in the game. There goes the drive for Wanger. Tough contact there on the low block. Instead of entry pass, Colson off the glass, no good. Battle for the rebound, and it got tipped to Klasner. He'll drive, gives it back. Troyer sets, fires, three points, shot is good. Give the assist to Klasner and give the three point bucket to Troyer. Troyer now one for two from deep. Claymont sets up the offense again, 10 to four. Spin around Defense. shot for Watkins, blocked by Colson. He gets his own rebound, goes off to Mooneyham, and that's a nice find. Graydon Mooneyham finishes with a Parkway quick lane drive to the basket. Nice recovery there for Watkins with the uh, both the rebound and the patience. Yeah, it really was. After getting blocked again, didn't panic, settled himself, and uh, nice pass. Going to get like, going to follow number 11, Matthew Jackson uh, for Claymont, be his first. Checking in the ball game, a couple substitu substitutions. Benaya Klasner and number 11, Xander Heil. Jesse Seibert coming into the game for the first time for Claymont. Sitting down is Dylan Watkins. Again, just past halfway the first quarter, uh, Indian, or I'm sorry, Claymont with four uh, team fouls. Again, free throws are going to play a uh, 
major part of this first half, it looks like. Nia Claster has can't find anywhere to go. Finally gets it to Tyson Pryor. He'll drive in. Tough left-handed shot, and it's good. Boy, Tyson Pryor somehow hung in the air long enough to get that one to fall. And now here come the Mustangs again. And sometimes I think it takes a few possessions to remember he's left-handed. I Thank you for pointing it out because I didn't even realize that. 12-6 <laughs> is the lead for Indian Valley, and it's going to be picked off. That's going to be to Xander Heil for Indian Valley. Second turnover of the ball game. One for either team now. Here come the Braves, yep. and we're going to get a, a legal screen there. And, yeah, sure enough, it's going to go yep. on Benaya Klasner, his first. Yep, feet weren't quite set there yet. And, and uh, again, good call by the officials there. I, I think Benaya's seen the wide open court behind him, so he tried to give a little moving pick and get off on that roll, but he got caught in the air. Good eye on that Shannon Thomas down there. Saw it happen right in front of him. Three minutes to go in the first, 12-6. to six. Braves over the Mustangs so far. Seibert has it for the first time. After he checked in, Jordan Connor now has it. He's back on the nose of the Mustang logo here from Uricksville. He'll go to Matthew Jackson, who pump faked it. Indian Valley doing a good job denying now, except on that drive as Mooneyham got in. Rebound, Jesse Seibert has to save it, falling away. He'll go back to Mooneyham. Three-point shot up, way long. Rebound at Heil. Battle for it as Seibert was going after him, but he held on. Yeah, those rebounds that don't hit anything are sometimes the hardest ones to rebound and catches everyone off, uh, off guard every so often. There's a drive. Mid-range jumper for Pryor was no good. Give credit to Moreland on the board. Claymont pushing it down. They'll go to Connor on the right block. He, dra he backs in. Nice move around Klasner, and he finishes. Oh, what a beautiful play for Jordan Connor for his first make of the ball game as he juked out Isaac Klasner. Yeah, that's the old-fashioned head fake and uh, ball fake there. Uh, well done there. Claster to Claster now, the brother connection. is going to drive in. Nothing there. Tight defense going to be rebounded by Tyson Pryor. He'll go around, and he got fouled. Pryor, his first rebound, and he's going to be taking a trip to the free throw line as head coach Gary Watkins, I think, wanted a jump ball. Uh, Shannon Thomas, had a, did he have an argument down there? You really couldn't tell if he had an argument or not because there were three Mustangs in there. I think they could have gave the foul to any one of them. But Axton picked up his second. He just came in for Fox, who was in foul trouble. And now Jackson's out. Thank you for that, Shannon. First free throw from the Ferris Chevrolet free throw line is good for Pryor. 13 to 8 now the lead. Nate Barnaby checks in for the first time for Claymont. Second free throw was up and good. Another substitution for Indian Valley. Leo Wanger comes back in. Sitting down will be Pryor. Well-deserved rest for him after a nice first quarter. Jordan Connor sits. Dylan Watkins comes back for Claymont. Also, Coy Preston in the game for the Mustangs. And I think I've caught you up on everybody who's on the court now. <laughs> Brody Moreland has it. Goes off to Preston. Preston's going to draw the guard from Wanger. Pump fake there for Moreland. He'll drive in, kicks it back. Watkins going to drive in. Nice defense. Indian Valley deny, 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 keeping everything out on the perimeter. They've been doing a good job of that so far tonight, hence the only eight points for Claymont thus far. Again, doing a nice job moving the feet and, again, using their bodies instead of reaching. And, uh, again, nice job to this point. Preston has it, stops, gives it off Moreland. Now Barnaby thought about a three-point shot, moving three-point shot, thought better of it as Braden Troyer is all over yep. him. And we're going to get a five-second call, and head coach Gary Watkins can't believe it. Not sure uh, what he was upset exactly about because I just thought it was good defense for Troyer forcing that turnover. Well, again, I think there's two things. You had uh, Barnaby, again, takes the one dribble and picks it up, doesn't go anywhere. There's your first mistake, and then a lot of the Mustangs are, aren't moving to help him get the ball, and, uh, again, the combination's not making uh, Watkins happy. Handoff, Tyson Pryor draws in, steps back to his right. Mid-range jumper, no good. Barnaby gets his first rebound of the game. Here comes Claymont. He'll stop. He's guarded by Troyer again. See if Claymont can work the ball to the interior. Seibert was almost not paying attention there and <laughs> let that one go away, but he does corral it. Braves defense extending now back to about the volleyball line. As now slowing things down will be Brody Moreland. He holds up the one finger to hold for the last shot here. 30 seconds to go in the first. 14-8 to eight is the lead for Indian Valley. 
Could have also just been calling out a play, but I assumed he was trying to tell him, hey, guys, one shot. Uh, I think there's ten guys in the court right now who are happy the pace has kind of slowed <laughs> down a little bit. Uh, they need the breather. Yeah. <laughs> Drive, kicks, right side, Preston, open, no good. Tyson Pryor grabs the rebound. He'll give it off to Troyer. Pushing it down the court of the Braves. Three seconds to go, and Troyer loses it. But they're going to say Jesse Seibert poked it away, so the Braves are going to get it with 1.3 seconds. Try to create a final shot here. And looks like Reese Colson checking into the game, so alley-oop opportunity maybe? This will be interesting. Like I said, 1.3. Again, you got enough to get set and take a nice shot and see what we do here. Troyer, Klasner, and it's good. Oh, what a beautiful play. Braden Troyer to Isaac, to Benaya Klasner. And Indian Valley leads 16 to 8. Timeout on the court as we head to the second. Big Z Sports is back after this. The certified public accountants at Needenthal & Company believe in the value of relationships. Needenthal & Company has been in business for over 50 years in your community, helping individuals and businesses grow. Needenthal & Company can help manage and prepare your payroll, plan your estate, and prepare your business and personal income taxes. Stop in to the Needenthal facility on North Wooster Avenue in Dover and become a valued client today. The First National Bank of Denison appreciates the hard work and dedication area athletes exhibit to be the best they can be for their team. We follow that same philosophy with our customers, working hard to build personal relationships and making our services convenient. The First National Bank of Denison's community involvement is important to us and we love supporting our local schools. The First National Bank of Denison with offices in Denison, Dover, Janet and Hutton, South Broadway, and Shunbrunn in New Philadelphia. We have our roots where others have their branches. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender for play-by-play -play action is right here on 99.9 Z Country. Kicking off the second quarter of high school basketball, right? Little Bob Seeger to bring us back in from the timeout. 16 to 8 is the lead for the Indian Valley Braves. Mustangs have the ball. Quick three-point shot. Nate Barnaby, no good. And wow, can Tyson Pryor yeah, that, jump out of the gym. That, that guy's got some springs right there. And again, great rebound. Third rebound of the game for him. I'm pretty sure his knees were at everyone else's head <laughs> when he went up for that. 16-8 is the lead. He'll get a mid-range jumper on the way, and it's good. Isaac Klasner with the assist. Tyson Pryor makes Claymont pay with the soft defense. 18-8 now your lead. 7.20 to go in the second. Pryor having himself a very nice game thus far. Again, what's going to help Tyson? Dylan Watkins way long on that shot. Nate Barnaby with the offensive board. He'll spin around, and he was wide open, and he knocks it down. I don't think Barnaby was expecting to be that <laughs> wide open. Again, one of those rebounds that doesn't hit rim. <laughs> Never know where it goes and kind of landed right in his lap and took advantage of the opportunity. That is a hey mom, look what I found <laughs> moment. But he will take it and so will the Mustangs. 18 to 10 now, the lead for Indian Valley. Troyer has it. Looks to go into Colson. Instead finds Pryor. Pryor jab step, steps back. Mid-range shot on the way. Off back iron. Colson battles for it. It's going to be hauled in by Claymont, though, to Preston. Coy Preston, his first rebound. And Mustang's going to push it up now. Six and a half to go before halftime. Preston guarded by Wanger. Wanger all over him. He gets the ball into Watkins. Step up shot and it's blocked. Reese Colson hit it right to a Claymont player who misses it. The three point or the shot was from Barnaby. Isaac Klasner gets the rebound that time. Second block of the game for Reese Colson. Colson has it, low block, and he got shoved down there by Jesse Seibert. <laughs> Boy, it's, it's hard to get past Jesse Seibert. Uh, there's some big boys down Woo. low banging tonight. This is good. Braden Troyer runs up to the free throw line, no good. Reese Colson on the putback. Third rebound, first basket for him, and it's now a 20 to 10 lead. If you're not kidding, uh, physicality has ramped up underneath there, as we said would probably happen. Coy Preston gets it wide there open in go. front of the Indian Valley bench, and it's good. Coy Preston hits his first three-pointer of the game, and head coach Ty Miller for Indian Valley was hot on that one. Drives in, Tyson Pryor, no good. Reese Colson rebound. He missed it, too, and Claymont picks it up. It's going to be Graydon Mooneyham who gets it. He'll move to Watkins. Watkins step up mid-range jumper, and it's no good. Rebound by Leo Wagner for now for the Braves. Wanger, I should say, not Wagner. Troyer, nice find to Isaac Klasner there. He'll drive in, hop step, shot in the lane, and it's good. Isaac Klasner with a parkway quick lane drive to the basket. It's now a 22-13 lead for Indian Valley. This must be an IVC game, the way we go up and down and fast. And nobody wants to stop <laughs> for anything. Stolen by Leo Wanger. He pokes it away from Brody Moreland. He's going to try to go all the way, and he will. 
Another turnover, take it back. It was actually Graydon Mooneyham, and we're going to get a timeout on the court. Big Z Sports will take it with them, and we're back after this. The Fraternal Order of Eagles, Yorksville, Area 2264, is a proud supporter of local school programs and youth programs and local police and fire departments. The Eagles welcome you to enjoy live entertainment, kids' Christmas parties, kids' Halloween parties, and family picnics. To learn more about the Yorksville Eagles, they invite you to stop by and see how they are truly people helping people. Someone you know is already a member. 332 North Main Street in Yorksville, 740-922-9084. WTUZ. Back to Eurexville, and thank you so much for joining Big Z Sports tonight for this high school basketball presentation by TMK Valley Propane, the Tuscarawas Insurance Agency, Altman Hospital, and DAC Vitamins and Minerals. We are live for the PAC Drilling Mobile Studio, and Indian Valley leads 24 to 13, under five minutes to go before halftime. The pace has intensified, Aaron Stump. Uh, I tell you what. We appreciate every listener we have tonight, but if you get a chance to come to these games, oh. th these things are awesome to watch. These kids are busting their tails right now. This is just a fun game. Stolen by Colson in the paint. It was Jordan Connor driving in. Tight defense from Tyson Pryor, and Colson nabs the steal. Four and a half to go now in the second. 24-13 is the Indian Valley lead. Pryor has it. He'll go off to Colson. He'll drive in, spin around, in the lane, puts it up, back iron, no good, grabs his own board and puts it up again. And how in the world did he get that one to fall? Reese Colson, his third offensive rebound and hung in the air there to make that one fall. I tell you what, not, a, not an easy shot either, especially from about the four or five foot distance there. And they got a nice put back. Had the friendly roll soft touch too. Claymont now doubled up by Indian Valley. It's 26-13, four minutes to go. Drive there for Brody Moreland. He lost control, and I think they're going to say Troyer hit it, though, at last, so Claymont will retain possession. Moreland was wanting the foul, though, saying he got hacked on the arm. Checking into the game for the first time for Indian Valley, Landon McPeak, as Drew Fox is back in the game for Claymont after his early foul trouble. I think that's a good move by uh, Coach uh, Coach Miller there again. We've had a fast pace. Get that bench involved and uh, get some rest for your uh, starters. Watkins left side to Connor. Thought about a three-pointer. Instead drives in. Stops in the low block. Spin around. Shot, and it's good. No. Called it no good. Foul oh, did he floor. say on the floor? Okay. Yeah. I thought I saw him put his hand down for uh, saying it was good, but instead said it was on the floor. I think that's uh, Brayden Troyer's first team's uh, second foul. And that was a miscommunication on the inbound. It's picked off. Benaya Klasner going to try to go coast to coast. No good. And he got fouled there. He got fouled from behind by, it was Graydon Mooneyham. I guess was. That should have been Mooneyham. I mean, it was a number 13 down there with him, so I would imagine. And no, instead they're going to say it was Brody Moreland. Are we sure about that? No good there for Benaya yeah. Claster on the first one. I I'll tell you what, how I how I think we've got that one right. Uh, how we've got that one right there, Aaron Stump. That the inbound play, no good there. Reese Colson offensive board, he can't get it. Moreland was the one who inbounded it. Yeah, I don't think I don't he ran that fast down there. Not sure. Regardless, That's a fruitless trip at the free throw line for Claster. Remains 26-13, three and a half to go before halftime. Mustangs Moreland has it. He'll go in. It was Mooneyham to Watkins. No good. Good defense underneath there. Rebound to Isaac Klasner. Klasner's second board of the game. It'll be Landon McPeak bringing it up now. Braden Troyer's going to get the drive. In the paint, no good. Battle for the rebound, and I would have to say it's going to stay here, and it will. It's off the hands of Jordan Connor. Subbing into the game, Jesse Seibert again. Dylan Watkins will take a break. As Shannon Thomas, uh, mic issues, are you back? Yeah, I think I'm back now, guys. Okay, good. <laughs> we'll get your insights from about three feet away from us right now at the moment. For the well, Braves, go ahead, Shannon. Well, I can tell you during the last time out, Coach Gary Watkins was not happy about the rebounding effort on his team. He's really not going to be happy at halftime. <laughs> right you are, Shannon. Thank you for that. Indian Valley leading by 13, 245 to go before the half. Kind of slowed the pace down a little bit. Maybe give... Some of those starters <laughs> a breather. 
What a move there by Isaac Claster. He'll step up to the mid-range, kicks it back. Braden Troyer was wide open, thought about the three, but thought better of it, and actually Indian Valley coaching staff was happy with that decision. He, he really wanted to pull that trigger, though. That was Steph Curry <laughs> range, and he thought better of it. Troyer drives in, goes back. And Braves really just kind of killing clock here, McPeak to Klasner. For Claymont's sake here, do you risk trying to throw more pressure and just try to force a turnover? I, I'm not sure. Well, again, I think Claymont's going to extend themselves, which that's what Indian Valley wants. Nice. Klasner to Colson, who tried to go up for the slam, but he got hit from behind by Seibert, so he'll go to the line. <laughs> Colson so far yeah. has not made a trip to the Ferris Chevrolet free throw. So we have some passionate students here in Eurixville. <laughs> These two schools bring the student sections, and they are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, we're sitting next to the Claybot Stewart sections. They they are funny. Oh, it's been fun so far. First free throw up and good for Colson. Checking into the game will be Leo Wanger. He will come in for Landon McPeak. Take that back. No, he did not come in for McPeak. Who did he come in for? Troyer, I think. Braden Troyer. Next free throw up and good for Colson. He's got six here in the first half. 28-13, two-minute warning before the half. Seibert has it, guarded by Colson. Poked away, and it's Reese Colson. Another steal for him. He'll drive in, spin around, and stop and pop, and it's good. A Parkway quick lane drive to the basket for Reese Colson. His second steal of the ballgame and eighth point, and we've got a technical foul coming for head coach Gary Watkins as he was hot about something. And he got teed up there by the official. I'm not sure what happened there. Shannon Thomas just probably something said. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. I know the ref ran by him. Coach Watkins said something, and he just he teed him. So it must have just been in the communication. Isaac Klasner going to step to the line now for the free throw. And that one was up and good. Do we count that as a Ferris Chevrolet trip to the free throw line Absolutely. even when it comes on a tech? It's first time we've had a tech this year that I, on a game I've been on. Next one was up and good as well, pushing the Indian Valley lead to 32-13. to 13. Well, and I think a lot of that has to do with the frustration Coach oh, it's, Watkins it's has right frustration. now. His team's, uh, team's turning the ball over, not playing very well right now. Indian Valley's taking advantage of it, and uh, I think I think he just needed a release. That's the scary thing is, uh, you know, you never want to see a team just kind of almost going through the motions and just making the passes that don't have extra zip, and that's been the biggest problem. Drew yeah. Fox tried to poke in for on Landon McPeak for a steal, but he got nailed for the foul again. That's his uh, third for the game. Fox had the positioning, but just put a little too much shoulder into that one. Again, those foul, I mean, they're 40 foot from the basket, and uh, again, uh, those, those are the frustrating ones if you're coach. Indian Valley now in the bonus. McPeak's first free throw up and good. Indian Valley thus far at the line has had a very productive game from the charity stripe. I don't think they've actually missed a free throw all game. Now let's see if I jinxed him, which is normally <laughs> what we do. I didn't. A perfect trip again from the Ferris Chevrolet free throw line for McPeak. Checking back in, Braden Troyer sitting down, Isaac Klasner. I, I believe that's the first time Isaac Klasner sat down here in the first half. It, right you are, Shannon. So we'll call it a well-deserved break. A minute and a half to go before <laughs> halftime. 34-13. Driving in was Moreland. Goes to Mooneyham. Mooneyham, and that one got tipped, I think, by Wanger, and it went off of Jesse Seibert, so it's Braves' ball. I think Wanger got a hold of that one. I think he did, and I, I think the official was signaling that as well. And, uh, again, if you, the Mustangs weren't sure, they went and got it and unfortunately battled it. Hey, Shannon Thomas, uh, Isaac Klasner coming back in, Leo Wanger sitting down. So, so much for that break. <laughs> Isaac only needed 10 seconds to recharge his batteries. <laughs> Coach, I just need a drink of water, I swear, and then we can go back in. I ought to be young again. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't even that much farther removed from high school, and I'm telling you, there's no way in the world. Isaac Claster drives in, gives it off to Landon McPeak. Minute to go before halftime, 21 points. The Braves have opened this thing up. Drew Fox guarding McPeak. Sorry, Troyer. He'll go back out, and it's that, there's that keep-away game again. It's worked well for Indian Valley thus far, especially this late in the clock. Klasner going to drive in, stop, gives it off. Benaya Klasner, and it's good. The Klasner brothers link up, and it's now a 36-13 lead. Indian Valley's done a nice job. I mean, they were going fast. They were scoring. Coach Miller pulled it out. Sometimes those teams struggle with the slow down there. Jesse Seibert dribbles in past Benaya Klasner and hits the ground hard. He got tripped up there by Landon McPeak, his first foul. 
Sure. Said only team or only team or three for uh, easy for me to say right now. <laughs> Third right. team foul for uh, Indian Valley. Drew Fox sits. Nate Barnaby comes in for the Mustangs. Leo Wanger comes back in for the Braves, and sitting is missed who went out of the game. Apologies there. Oh, McPeak. Inbound play to Jesse Seibert. He's guarded by Benaya Klasner. Zips that one into Graydon Mooneyham. <laughs> Good hands there. That, that one came in hot. Well, Graydon's normally the quarterback, but apparently he can <laughs> he can catch the ball too. Drives in, poked away by Tyson Pryor. Pryor gets the steal. Isaac Klasner goes up to him. He'll drive in off low block. Tight defense, but it doesn't matter. Another Parkway quick lane drive to the basket. Tyson Pryor is feeling it tonight. Another turnover for the Mustangs. Five seconds to go before the half. Drives in. Barnaby, nothing there. Rebounded. Braden Troyer pushes it up. Tyson Pryor, one second. Stops. Three-point shot. Off front iron. No good. But still, Indian Valley leads 38-13. to Going to head on into the first National Bank of Denison halftime report now as the Braves have really opened this one up. And we're actually going to see if, head, if uh, Shannon Thomas can catch up with head coach Tyrone Miller for Indian Valley. We'll see if he's got a few things he wants to say. And sure enough, Shannon's got him. Coach, you got to be real happy with the way the boys played here in the first half. Yeah, played really hard both ends of the floor. We knew it was going to be physical. I thought we were able to kind of play clean defensively but physical at the same time. So uh, really proud of how we played in the first and one of the timeouts, I heard you told the boys that they need to be patient and get better shots. Look like they really took your advice there in the second quarter. Yeah, the first four possessions, of, first four possessions of the second quarter, we had some like one one pass shots, no pass shots. But then once we started to share the ball a little bit, um, the, the percentage of the shots go go up quite a bit as soon as you start doing that. So really proud of how unselfish they played for the rest of the second quarter and and just playing really really hard on both ends of the floor. What's going to be your message at halftime? Uh, we can't, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. We, can't, we can't look at the scoreboard. we got to continue to do what we do and not take any plays off. Claymont's too good at home for us to, to relax here for the last 16 minutes. All right, good luck, Coach. Thanks, Shannon. Thank you, Shannon. Head coach Tyrone Miller for the Indian Valley Braves as they lead 38-13. to On to the First National Bank of Denison halftime report. Big Z Sports returns after these messages. Hi, this is Jan McInturf. For the past 30 years, the residents in and around Tuscarawas County have made the call to the realtors and staff at McInturf Realty for buying and selling of residential and commercial properties. We truly live in a great community, and in all those communities, there's nothing better than high school basketball. For myself and all the agents and staff at McInturf Realty, we would like to wish all the area athletes good luck this season and make the call to McInturf Realty at 330-364-SOLD or find us online at McInturfRealty.net. Located in the rolling hills of Holmes County, Kime Home Center is the destination and trusted source for your home, building, and woodworking needs. And we are now offering appliances. At Kime, you'll find major kitchen and laundry appliance brands such as General Electric, Whirlpool, Speed Queen, and much more. Our sales and service teams can help with product selection, delivery, installation, ongoing maintenance, and repair. Give us a call or stop by today. Kime, built on trust since 1911. Rosenberry Towing, located in New Philadelphia, has been Tuscarawas County's longest operating towing and recovering provider since 1967. Rosenberry offers a full range of equipment to handle any size job at any time while being trained and certified to perform safely and efficiently. Some services offered include light and heavy towing, equipment transfer, and a 60-ton rotator service. Need a tow or heavy lift? Call Rosenberry Towing at 330-343-3333 or online at rosenberrytowing.com for a full list of services. Tailgating season is here, so why not do it in style with a new car, truck, or SUV from Parkway Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Dover. Choose a winning game plan when you bring your trade and ask about great financing options on any car, truck, or SUV on the lot. Joel and the Parkway CDJR team will help you shop and find the best deal for you. No hassle and no stress. Football season is the perfect time for a great deal, so pick a winner at Parkway Dodge Jeep Ram and Dover today. Your way, the right way. Visit ParkwayChryslerDodgeJeepRam.com and drive Drive forward. If your New Year goals include protecting your family or business with life insurance, then I'd like to help. For over eight years, Wallace & Associates Insurance Agency has been providing clients with a variety of products to fit your needs and your budget. Give Justin a call at 330-874-7117. That's 330-874-7117 to review your options. Or you can find me on Facebook by searching for Wallace & Associates Insurance Agency. That's Wallace & Associates Insurance Agency. Let's protect what you value most. 
planning your next vacation or home improvement project, and worried about managing expenses, CSB can help with that. Setting a goal is the first step to achieving your vision, and CSB's Money Manager tool helps you get started. Whether you are recovering from Christmas spending or preparing to send kids to college, the Personal Financial Management tool helps you set goals, track your spending, and monitor your progress. Money Manager is available within CSB's online banking. Check it out today, the Commercial and Savings Bank member FDIC. The Fraternal Order of Eagles, Yorksville, Area 2264, is a proud supporter of local school programs and youth programs and local police and fire departments. The Eagles welcome you to enjoy live entertainment, kids' Christmas parties, kids' Halloween parties, and family picnics. To learn more about the Yorksville Eagles, they invite you to stop by and see how they are truly people helping people. Someone you know is already a member. 332 North Main Street in Yorksville, 740-922-9084. Dr. Nathan Springer is in the business of making smiles, specializing in braces and Invisalign for children and adults. Dr. Springer provides smiles that can be recognized anywhere. Just look at the winning smile on some of the players. Compliments of Dr. Nathan Springer Orthodontics. Hey, that smile of pride on the face of mom and dad might be from Dr. Springer too. Dr. Nathan Springer Orthodontics in the business of making smiles at 107 Ray Avenue Northeast in New Philadelphia. Hi, I'm Zach Motice with the Tuscross Insurance Agency. For all your auto, home, farm, and business insurance needs, contact our team at the Tuscross Insurance Agency or stop in and see us at one of our three locations in Sugar Creek, Strasburg, and downtown New Philadelphia, providing excellent service to the Tuscross Valley since 1885. Everyone here at the Tuscross Insurance Agency would like to wish all area athletes and teams good luck this fall. This is RJ Jacobs from DAC Vitamins and Minerals. Did you know that DAC Vitamins and Minerals has more than 40 proven equine supplements that include daily multivitamins, joint, digestion, reproduction and fertility, calming, and many other specialty products? DAC also carries a complete line of livestock products called DAC Show Contender. Feed DAC Vitamins and Minerals to get the competitive edge in the show pen. We've been feeding champions since 1983. A proud supporter of their communities for over 87 years, with offices located in Denison, Dover, Janaden Hutton, South Broadway, and Shunbrunn in New Philadelphia. They have roots where others have their branches. Dialing up the First National Bank of Denison halftime show, 38 to 13. Indian Valley dominating away from home in this IVC clash thus far. And Aaron Stump, it's been uh, no surprise they've been dominant considering the one-two punch so far tonight of Tyson Pryor and Reese Colson. They have pretty much taken this game over for the Braves. Yeah, I think anytime you get multiple players scoring for your team, you got a great chance of winning. Indian Valley's no different. Seven guys on the scores board. Um, again, a lot of guys scoring multiple points right now and uh, really making a difference uh, throughout this game. As for the Claymont Mustangs, it's been a struggle. Just the 13 points total for them. Uh, leading score. Hey, Nick. I don't want to interrupt you here, but we got Coach Walker standing down here with me. Oh, thank you, Shannon. I'm sorry. Go right ahead. Coach, the boys kind of dug themselves in a pretty big hole right there, you know. What, what was your message to them right here? They got to come out and rebound back. They did a great job playing defense, but gave up those second, third opportunities, and that kind of dug them in a hole a little bit. That was one of the keys to the game. You should have been in there giving the speech at halftime. They they heard rebound for two days. They heard <laughs> it again at halftime. If we uh, Good defense, and then you give up second chance, third chance point. Yeah. Offensively, it's doing a good job down there, penetrating the ball, getting to the hoop, getting some nice shots, and all of a sudden they started pulling out. Do they got to get back to the hoop? Do, do what they know how to do, right? That they know that. We said do your job, and they, they've heard that before. Hopefully we see a little difference they can have. All right, good luck, Coach. Thank you, Shannon Thomas. That was head coach for the Claymont Mustangs, Gary Watkins. His team trails 38-13. to 13 as uh, Lydia Brady for Classic Communications laughing as we're trying to do some uh, engineering work, but it's uh, not good engineering, we'll put it that <laughs> way. Under two minutes here on the clock before halftime is over. Leading scorers for the Claymont Mustangs. It's been kind of a rough one for them. Leading scorers Brody Moreland with the uh, four points for him, three points for Coy Preston, then two for Barnaby, Graydon Mooneyham, Jordan Connor, and that does it. 
for the scoring. That's, that's it. And again, you had uh, three of them score the first quarter and only two score the second quarter. And, and no free throws either. Zero for zero on the free throw line. And the second quarter, Indian Valley won tw uh, 22 to 5. Um, obviously the big difference. And again, you got multiple scores for Indian Valley. Again, you got uh, Tyson Pryor leading with 10. Reese Colson with 8. Isaac Klasner with 7. Braden Troyer with five, Landon McPeak with two, Leo Wagner with two, um, and uh, looks like Benai Kasner for, with four, So and then 10 for 12 from the free throw line. My goodness gracious. Well, Aaron Stum, thank you so much. That will wrap up our first National Bank of Denison halftime report. Coming up, the final half between the Indian Valley Braves and Claymont Mustangs. Again, the Braves winning 38-13. Don't go anywhere. Our presentation with Big Z Sports and Collaxing Communications returns after this. When struggles seem too tough, when sickness takes a hold, when cancer picks a fight, when baby's on its way, when life throws you a curveball, we've got you. With nearly 130 years in your backyard, Altman knows you and knows your community better than anyone. We're your neighbors, your friends, your family, and we want you to be the healthiest you can be. Altman, we are ready. We've got you. WTUZ. Back to Eurexville as we are set for the third quarter of action between Indian Valley and Claymont Braves up big time 38-13 as we get underway. Big shout out to all of our presenting sponsors for bringing you tonight's broadcast from the IVC. Leo Wanger has it just inside the three-point arc. He'll be setting up the offense, calling it out. Nearly had that one picked off there by Graydon Mooneyham. Would have been a good start for Claymont for the second half. Yeah, it's one of those things. Claymont's, it looks like they're going to extend their defense, and again, they've got to clamp down and jump on Indian Valley early if they have any chance of winning this game. Tyson Pryor nearly lost that one, but he was able to recover it. He kicks it right side. Braden Troyer, three-point shot off the stanchion above the rim, so that will be Claymont ball. Mustang's going to inbound it here for Troyer. I mean... He had the open shot. I will give him credit for that one just a little too long. Yep. And again, if you're Claymont, one possession at a time. Stopped him there. Go down the offense. See if we can score and uh, chip away at this thing. Jordan Connor now has it for the Mustangs. Nice entry find for him. Spin around shot up and no good. It was Moreland who had it. Couldn't get it to fall. Rebound for the Braves there. Didn't see who it was. But regardless, Wanger will now have it for Indian Valley. Again, Indian Valley doing a nice job of boxing out there. It looks like we're going to get Brody Moreland for the foul. Got a little too handsy on the drive for Isaac Klasner. First foul of the second. And his second. Twos are wild, maybe. <laughs> Wanger inbounds to Pryor. Under seven to go here. No one scored so far in this second half. We've got the defense back after we had for the first few minutes of the, uh, the start of the first quarter, Aaron. But something tells me that's not going to last too long. And again, looks like Coach Miller's going to try to take some time off here and uh, slow this game down a little bit and try to decrease the number of possessions Claymont has for the second half. Klasner has it, gets his man off his feet, and what a move. My, uh, my oh, my, Isaac Klasner got Brody Moreland up in the air, and he just put him in the spin cycle underneath. So now it's a 40-13 to 13 game. Tell you what, Isaac's got the nice uh, lost art of head fakes right now. And again, he saw the uh, Claymont guys fly right by him. And again, uh, great use of the head fake. Tyson Pryor late arriving on defense, and Graydon Mooneyham makes him pay. Three point shot is buried. That's actually the first make from deep for Claymont this game, but only their second attempt. Wanger has it for the Braves. Under six minutes to go now. Tight defense for Moreland. Got whistled for that foul on the previous possession. No fear he's going to get right back up <laughs> in his face. Braden Troyer hangs in the air on the baseline drive, and it's good. That's Troyer's second make from the floor in four attempts. 
That was a pretty mid-range jumper. Again, we were talking amongst ourselves here at halftime about how Indian Valley was having troubles penetrating and shooting off the dribble, and right there, uh, he proved us wrong there tonight. Had a nice shot. Jordan Connor went to Watkins, but it was a little too long, so he has to kick it back out. Connor's going to drive, nearly has it swiped, instead puts up the tough angle shot, no good. Reese Colson grabs his eighth rebound. Tyson Pryor drives in, and he got nailed for the charge there. Good recovery by Brody Moreland as he slid right in front of him. Pryor can't really believe that one, but I think they might have got that one right. As it looks yeah, like, uh, looks like Coach Miller there is a little upset. I, 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 questioning it. We might have had a different angle than Coach Miller had. As the referee had a chuckle when he was going down there. Shannon Thomas, uh, you were on the wrong end. Never mind. <laughs> but, well, I do agree. I do think he got his feet set just in time and. With that spin, sometimes the refs think of you as an out-of-control player, so you're going to get the charge every time. Dylan Watkins misses from deep. It's rebounded by Brody Moreland. Moreland's first offensive board. They're going to work the ball around again. Watkins going to drive in there and off the glass and good. Dylan Watkins drives right past Johnny Meekin, who's checked into the game. Watkins' first make from the floor tonight. And again, one of the things we always appreciate, no matter what the score is, you see Claymont coming out to play hard. Tyson Pryor off the glass. That was a tough angle shot, and it is hauled in by Brody Moreland. He works it up to Connor in the corner. 42-18 is the lead. 4-10 to go in the third. Deep three-point shot is good. Graydon Mooneyham buries his second one from deep. And Claymont chipping away, but they still trail by 21. Bringing it up will be Troyer for the Braves. Isaac Klasner has it, screened from Pryor. Drives to the right side, gives it off Meekin. Entry pass to Pryor, he battles with it. Nice steal for Jordan Connor, take it back. They're gonna get him for the foul. As I thought for a minute there, they might have actually called Tyson Pryor for that. Wholesale substitutions coming in. Yeah, it's kind of a Questionable there, call two. Again, I think we had a little bit bad angle on it, but uh, we're going to go with that. Looked like good defense on there, and uh, unfortunately gets uh, dinged with the foul. Reese Colson and Benaya Klasner checking into the game. Xander Heil back in there for the Braves. Spin around mid range jumper, no good for Isaac Klasner off the hands of his brother Benaya, and it will be Claymont ball. Again, Claymont fortunate there. Again, Coach Watkins talked about it coming out, rebounding again. Uh, Pretty poor uh, defensive box out there and uh, got away with it there. I'd say uh, he might be okay with the fact they got possession. Something tells me that's not what he's thinking <laughs> right now. Jordan Connor has it, gives it off. Watkins, jab step, but he will pass it back out. It's Mooneyham to Drew Fox and nobody home. Braden Troyer is going to come home with the steal. He's going to run in and put it off the glass. No good, but he got hit from behind by Moreland. Again, Brody picks up another one quick. That's his third for the game. Be the team's third. And stepping to the line will be Troyer. Nearly had the end one opportunity, just couldn't quite get it up above the rim. Another Ferris Chevrolet trip to the free throw line. Indian Valley's been busy there so far tonight. First one was up and good. Checking into the game for Claymont. It's going to be Jesse Seibert and Matthew Jackson. Troyer again, now three for three at the line. One of the keys we talked about earlier, again, were the turnovers again, and th those are the things that just drive you nuts as a coach. Th those turnovers right there were, again, then, you know, good hustle turnover, I guess, if there is such a thing, but throws it away and, uh, again, uh, layup and free throws down on the other end. Devin Whitman in the game for the first time for Claymont. Brody Moreland will take a rest. Next free throw, no good for Troyer. Battle for the rebound. It's going to be hauled in by Jackson. And he got fouled that time. Boy, he got swarmed, in fact. <laughs> I don't know who the foul is going to go on specifically. but uh, Reese Colson be I, his first. I was going to say Reese and Klasner really. <laughs> they teamed up and uh, quite the contact underneath. Sander uh -huh. Heil will sit. Leo Wagner come, Wanger comes in. I said a uh, little height advance on uh, Matthew there. And, uh, again, did a nice job of staying strong and uh, protecting the ball. And, Keeping the ball for the Mustangs. Whitman has it. Couple of jab steps. Goes off to Mooneyham. Three-point shot on the way, and it's good. That's his third three-pointer for the third quarter. Good. Nine, for, uh, nine points in the third quarter. Give the assist to Devin Whitman. 
It's now a 43-24 ball game, under three minutes to go in the third. Colson has it. Off to Troyer, going to get a screen, fake the screen. Now he'll drive in on the low block, steps back out, nearly had that one thrown away too. Troyer, jab steps off to the right, and wow, is he quick, but too strong off the glass. Reese Colson grabs the board, but he got fouled. Braden Troyer had the right idea, just a little too strong off the glass. I think he was anticipating a little contact there, didn't get it, and like you said, a little too strong, but great move. It almost seemed like he lost the handle going up. Yep. Again, looks like Devin Whitman's first foul. Colson so far from the Ferris Chevrolet free throw line, two for two, make it three for three. Substitutions again, Landon McPeak in, Leo Wanger down for the Braves. Remember we said in the pregame, Aaron, I said that uh, having a deep bench might be uh, important here when you come into this time of this year, and Indian Valley certainly making use of it. Tyson Pryor steps back in, Reese Colson sits. Well, it's good to have those deep benches again just to get the rotation, but at the same time, it's great to get these guys some actual game situations uh, going as well. Again, there, there's a big difference between practice speed and game speed, and uh, every chance you get to step on the court, uh, you should take advantage of those. There is no substitute for game speed. Braden Mooneyham nearly lost it, but he got it back. He'll go off to Connor. Jordan Connor, very quiet night for him as one of our previous games here when they played Ridgewood. He was our McIntyre Freelty player of the game, but he has not even put up a shot so far tonight. Give credit to that Indian Valley defense. Matthew Jackson drives, and it's good. Nice drive along the baseline of Parkway Quick Lane. Drive to the basket. It's Wat or Jackson's first make. Tell you, it looked like Braden Troyer tried to take a charge there. And again, uh, Matthew Jackson did a nice job of avoiding it. Had great body control and uh, put the basket in. Nice job. I was going to say, I think Jackson literally went completely around him. Isaac Klasner to Tyson Pryor, and it's good. Boy, that hookup has worked all night. Fourth assist for Klasner. Fifth make for Pryor. Again, after having 10 in the first half, that's his first basket for the second half. Mooneyham has it, goes off to Connor. Matthew Jackson gets it again. He'll drive off low block, no good, but he got hacked by Isaac Klasner, who will help him back to the feet. And uh, I think he looked at him and said, my bad, man, that might have been a little <laughs> too hard. Shannon Thomas, uh, good to see, as uh, I think uh, Klasner knew uh, that was a little bit too strong. Yeah, Isaac went in there and took a big swat at it, thought he would get to the ball, and, and Jackson just got a little too close to him. And, and Isaac, Isaac's a great athlete, and... Uh, He's the best sportsman, so he, he helped him up off the floor. Matthew Jackson's first trip to the free throw line. Actually, first trip to the free throw line for the Mustangs. Unbelievable. Guess, 125 to go in the third. Guess on the positive, you're shooting 100%. You are, one for so, one. Yeah. From the Ferris Chevrolet free throw line, and I'm sure we probably jinxed him. We did not. Matthew <laughs> Jackson says, I'm going to break the curse of Big C Sports. 47-28 is the score now. Minute 20 to go in the third. You know, Shannon, i got to point out, we've seen a lot of Ice VC games this year, and I have been really impressed with the sportsmanship of all our teams. I, I have not seen a game yet where the players have gotten out of control, and I think it says a lot for the players as well as the coaches in this conference. Yeah, yeah, the coaches do a great job of reining their players in. They play with passion, play tough and physical. But like you said, the, sportsman, the sportsmanship in the IVC has been great this year. Yeah. Under a minute to go now, 19 points is the lead, and Braden Troyer nearly loses the handle, and I have no idea how he held on to that, but it looks like they're going to get Matthew Jackson, and Jackson can't believe it. He stares back at the official like, are you serious? <laughs> that would be Matthew's third. Again, those fouls you don't necessarily mind. That's a good hustle foul. Well, you're, 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 you're up there, you're playing pressure, you're playing tight, so, I mean, Absolutely. it's showing that you're hustling. Absolutely. Again. Isaac. That, that's why they give you five. <laughs> Look, if they weren't going to give me five, I wouldn't use all of them. That's, but there's a lot of truth in that. <laughs> Isaac Klasner drives in. Floater in the lane, and it's good. Parkway quick lane drive to the basket. Isaac Klasner now registers his 11th point. I'll tell you, sometimes those three to four footers are the toughest shots to make, and uh, great uh, great shot by him. Whitman drives in on yeah, It's going to be a charge, yeah. And sure enough, he got the charge. Happened in front of Shannon Thomas, and uh, Lena McPeak was uh, pretty much setting up a campfire down there, I think. Yeah, his feet had tree roots on him. He stood there and waited for him to come. <laughs> and, and when Aaron Stump sitting all the way over there can call a charge before the official ever <laughs> blowed his whistle, you knew it was going to be a charge. <laughs> Just 10 yeah. seconds to go now. 49-28, the lead for Indian Valley. <laughs> 
McPeak has it, lost it, and they're going to get Jackson again for a foul. I thought Jackson might have just uh, had good positioning that yeah, time. Yeah, that one I'm not sure. I, I think Landon McPeak just kind of dropped the ball there, and he had great positioning. And Yeah, that's, 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 that's a, a tough, tough one. one to call. So four fouls for Jackson. He'll sit. Five and a half to go, and Indian Valley is in the bonus already. So sure enough, they'll be stepping to the line. McPeak, his first time around, he was a perfect two for two from the Ferris Chevrolet free throw line. Friendly roll there, and it will drop. Normally the only kind of roll you get on your home court, but says don't worry, I'm all right with the rims here in Eurexville <laughs> too. McPeak steps up and delivers the next one, and it's good as well. Perfect three for three for him. Leo Wanger comes in. McPeak sits. 51-28. Claymont with enough time for one final shot here in the third. As it looks like Indian Valley is actually going to press up here a little bit. And again, got to give Indian Valley credit taking advantage of that uh, charity stripe tonight, doing a great job there. Whitman gets it across the timeline, slings it. Nate Barnaby on the way, and it's good. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Nate Barnaby <laughs> hits it from deep, and Claymont enjoys that one. But they trail 51-31. little momentum swing maybe. On to the fourth quarter now. Big Z Sports is back after this. Serving you, TMK is a name you trust. All the way with TMK, service with a personal touch. Hi, this is Phil with the Ford Parkway Quick Lane Service. When the vehicle that transports your team needs maintenance, you expect it to be done accurately and quickly so you can get back on the road. Don't get sidelined by your vehicle. When it comes to servicing your team's vehicle, let my all-star team at Parkway deliver you the winning combination to keep you on the road and safe for the long haul. Back to Eurexville now where the Indian Valley Braves lead 51-31. Fitting song from Eurexville, Aaron Stump. Don't gotta stop hurry believing. <laughs> get those, uh, those student sections back in. That's a great song for them. Claymont trails, and there's a drive for Nate Barnaby, and it's a nice one. Nate Barnaby coming off that ridiculous buzzer beater three from deep. Has a nice floater along the baseline and makes it an 18-point game. Next whistle will go down to Shannon Thomas here, what both teams had to say in between the quarters as Braden Troyer was trapped. And we're going to get a timeout, timeout, I do believe, and probably a smart timeout, just a 30-second. We'll keep it here to hear what Shannon, uh, in between heading into the final frame, you know, trailing by 20 were the Mustangs, but still maybe just something to be nice and positive about with that three-pointer buried, and you never know if weird things happen in high school basketball. Yeah, you always like to have the momentum. Coach Walker has told his team, you got to keep playing, you know, aggressive defense, play smart defense when they're in the bonus. We can't send them to the foul line and create some offense. Down on the other end of the court, Tyrone Miller, it's pretty much it's a 0-0 quarter to him. He, he was telling his guys the same thing. you got to create space, get in there, get better shots, take clean shots in this fourth quarter. Thank you, Shannon. 51-33 now coming out of that timeout. Again, a huge thank you to TMK Valley Propane, Altman Hospital, Tuscarawas Insurance Agency, and DAC Vitamins and Minerals. They're bringing you tonight's broadcast live from Claymont High School. IVC basketball doesn't get much better than this. Seven and a half to go now in the fourth. Braden Troyer brings it up for the Braves. Troyer trapped. He'll give it off to Klasner. Klasner slings it right side. Leo Wanger, good patience for the Braves. Not forcing the ball anywhere they don't need to give it. Entry pass prior on the foul line and puts it up tight. Tough defense. Good job by Coy Preston and Dylan Watkins. I tell you what, if you're a Coach Watkins, you're happy with that third quarter from the standpoint. You outscored Indian Valley 18 to 13. Nice Good find shot. there underneath as Graydon Mooneyham makes the weak defense pay. Now a 16-point ball game, under seven to go. Slings it cross court, does Claster to Leo Wanger, and again they're just being patient and slow. Same offensive set. This time they go to Colson. He'll go up and it's tipped, Good. but it doesn't matter. He puts it in and he's fouled. Reese Colson with the strong finish. Foul going to go on Dylan Watkins. Be his first foul. 
You know, the way, uh, a good adjustment by Colson, but I think his vision was on putting a little more punishment on the rim than that <laughs> one when he went up with the two hands. You know what, though? Uh, like you said, that's a great adjustment. He was going to go in hard. He took the shot, and again, he got the points, and that's what you need. Colson now 5-for-5 five five from the Ferris Chevrolet free throw line. Substitution, it's Badaya Claster coming in for Reese Colson. He'll sit down. 54-35, 6.45 to go in the fourth. Mustangs had a little momentum heading into the fourth quarter and to start things off. Going to have to get another spark going. Barnaby, step back, three, and it's good. Well, there's the spark. Graydon Mooneyham with the assist. Nate Barnaby with another shot from deep. I tell you, he's got himself a nice little game going here, playing really well. That one nearly picked off. Braden Troyer to Isaac Klasner. He'll run in. Off the glass, no good. Tyson Pryor with the offensive board. Nice play for Pryor. His sixth make from the floor. Makes it a 56-38 game. Six minutes to go. Indian Valley has really crashed the offensive boards tonight. Another three-point shot on the way. No good for Claymont. Putting that one up was Moreland. Benaya Klasner got the rebound. Yeah, the pickle that Claymont has right now. Again, they've extended their defense way out. And once you do that, that, that exposes uh, your paint and uh, a lot more chances for some offensive rebounding. Prior in to Klasner, and it's no good. Battle for the rebound. Going to go into the hands of Moreland. Dylan Watkins with the poke. Give him credit for that rebound as he knocked it away from Klasner. Another three-point shot. That one left well short. The three, Mooneyham put it up. Battle for the board underneath. Coy Preston had it, and I think they're going to get Benaya Claster. Might have put a little too much body into him, Shannon Thomas, as you were standing right down there. Yeah, Benaya got his leg over there and got it stood, but I think what helped the call a little bit was his foot looked like he slipped on the floor. So all that combined, it was still a foul, but it, it made it look better. Klasner sits. Colson back in. Looked like a nice little hockey hip check. Mooneyham drives right past Braden Troyer, and he gets it to fall on a Parkway quick lane drive to the basket. 15th point for Mooneyham. He's had himself a pretty nice night as well. Claymont still trails by 16, five minutes to go in the fourth. Chip, chip, chipping away are the Mustangs, slowly but surely. They're going to trap Pryor. He has it on the foul line. Step back. Mid-range jumper, no good. Dylan Watkins battles for the board and brings it in. And here come the Mustangs. Again, I think if you're Coach Miller, that's not the shot you're looking for right now. Again, the, the, the clock is your friend right now. Start using that time. Barnaby has it. He's guarded closely by McPeak. He'll drive in. Flip it back out to Moreland. He'll drive, spin around on the low block. Moreland, or Mooneyham, rather, uh, almost was in the paint a little bit too long. He'll go back outside. There's a shot, no good for Claymont, rebounded by Moreland. He'll miss, rebounded by Pryor for the Braves. Tell you, great hustle, rebound, shot by Moreland, just, just rolled off, unfortunately. Four and a half minutes to go in the fourth, 16 points. And I think Coach Ty Miller actually calling out to uh, slow things down to his Braves. Probably the smart choice there. I take it back, entry pass to Colson, and he walked. Yep. Reese Colson lost his feet, was looking up at the rim, and... I think tripped over himself, so another turnover for the Braves. Haven't had a whole bunch of turnovers, has Indian Valley tonight, though. No, but again, you know, Indian Valley's got to take their time right now. Again, you know, they're they're still forcing those shots, and it's uh, probably driving Coach Miller crazy right now. And again, use the time up and uh, until you get that nice open shot. Mustangs under four to go now. They still trail by 16. Nate Barnaby loses it, but they say it was poked away by McPeak. So he's still Mustang ball. Benaya Klasner is going to come back in for the Braves. He will sub out Reese Colson. Again, Indian Valley doing a really nice job on the defensive end. Every point that Claymont's got, again, it's been contested, tough shot. And, again, they've, they've scored some points, but they've been uh, well defended. They're making them earn it, that's for sure. Absolutely. Watkins has it on the inbound. He'll go off. Moreland drives, step back. Gives it off to Preston. Now he'll step up into the three off back iron. Isaac Klasner going to grab the rebound and give it off to Braden Troyer, who's going to bring it up. I gotta say, uh, Shannon Thomas, does Isaac Klasner ever check out of the game? Uh, he usually subs a lot, substitutes a lot out, but when he's filling it, the coach will let him go. There was one game this year where he played every minute. You, know, you gotta think about this. Claymont's still shooting these three three pointers where they've had the opportunity to take, but they they continue to shoot the three. They've knocked 12 points off of that uh, Braves lead. They, I think they just keep taking their three-pointer away. 
Thank you for that, Shannon. As a quick timeout on the court, Big Z Sports will take it with them. Again, the Braves lead 56-40. We're back after this. Is your vehicle banged up? Do you want fast, professional service to get you back on the road? This is Garrett Jacobs with AutoWorks Collision Center. We service cars, trucks, SUVs, and even semi-trucks and RVs. Whether you need auto glass replacement, paintless dent repair, assistance with warranty and insurance, or just a free estimate, AutoWorks has you covered. We even offer alignments for your heavy-duty vehicles like buses, motorhomes, and semis with our state-of-the-art Hunter Alignment System. Call 330-878-4223. Open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Let AutoWorks of Strasburg work for you. Again, it's Big Z Sports, it's high school basketball, it's the IVC, and it's Nick, Aaron, and Shannon. 56-40, the lead for the Indian Valley Braves, coming out of a timeout, three and a half to go. For Indian Valley's sake, uh, they were leading by a lot, not a lot, but a bigger margin at halftime. Claymont has chipped away a little bit, and Aaron, as you mentioned, they actually uh, Claymont actually outscored their rival in that third quarter, and uh, so far in the fourth, if I'm not mistaken, they're doing it here too. Doing the same thing. Again, that's what you want as a coach. Again, both coaches actually talked about it. It's 0-0 right now. Let's go play. First free throw for Isaac Claster from the Ferris Chevrolet free throw line. It's no good, and what hustle. That was Devin Whitman who got the rebound, and he kicks it off to Coy Preston. Claymont works it down. Corner three-point shot, no good for Brody Moreland. Braves rebound it, and it was Benaya Klasner. Again, another example like we were talking in the break right now. Claymont's come down, had some nice open threes, just can't hit those things to close the gap. Now, unfortunately, at the end of the day for basketball, it's going to be the biggest difference maker. You know, are yep. you going to put it in the bottom of the dish or not? They say the ball don't lie, and neither does the scoreboard. <laughs> <laughs> Three minutes to go here in the fourth, 56-40, your score. Nate Barnaby going to come away with a steal. Nice play for him. He stepped right in front of Braden Troyer. He'll drive in, nearly lost his footing, but he'll go back out. Barnaby's first steal. Preston has it. He'll go off to Moreland. He'll stop, pop at the free throw line. No good. Rebound going to go Braden Troyer for the Braves. Battle for the rebound. They're going to call Dylan Watkins on the foul. That's Troyer's first rebound of the contest. Second foul on Watkins. Again, they didn't really do a nice job with transition defense. Again, had the turnover there, but again, got back and stopped the ball. Uh, made Claymont shoot a tough uh, shot, missed it, and uh, good defensive rebound there. And if I'm not mistaken, double bonus now for the Braves. So Troyer will step to the Ferris Chevrolet free throw line and put up his first attempt, and it's good. Troyer doesn't hit a whole bunch of anything on those free throw shots, you know that? <laughs> Again, right now, four for five from the free throw line. 57-40 now the lead, 2.35 to go. Troyer's next one was good as well. Five, five for, for six. six. Yeah. I'm proud of you, uh, Aaron. You're doing your math very well now. 58-40, <laughs> I'm going to pay for that later. <laughs> Whitman has it and goes off to Preston. Mustangs likely going to come out of this one with their 10th loss this season. There's been the, some flashes there as a three-point shot for Moreland's no good. Battle for the rebound. Give it to Tyson Pryor. He'll bring it up. For the Mustangs, there have been flashes of moments, but uh, just keeping that sustained momentum going was the biggest problem for them tonight. And uh, it came down to making shots or not. And again, when they got down that second quarter, again, just not unable to. You, you can't do that in an IVC matchup. And uh, when you dig a hole that big, it's going to be extremely hard to come out of. Trap defense for Mustangs. Coming around trying to force an Indian Valley turnover. They do a good job getting around it. Tyson Pryor had it. Devin Whitman came through and took it out of his hands, but it bounced out of bounds in front of the Claymont student section. Looks like a substitution coming in for the Mustangs. It will be Matthew Jackson coming in. Coy Preston takes a seat. And like I said, even with the Mustangs down by 18 right now, no quit in this team. No. And, uh, again, another uh, tribute to uh, Coach Watkins and uh, his staff. Landon McPeak might have got away with a bit of a walk there as he kind of shuffles step to try to get around the defense. And looks like Drew Fox is going to get nailed again. That's his fourth. Fox has uh, had limited minutes in this game, Aaron, but unfortunately for him, he's played some tight defense, but he's been called every single time. Yeah, what well, didn't help uh, what Drew picked up those two quickies mm -hmm. uh, in the first quarter, then uh, Matthew Jackson came in for him, that he got in foul trouble. First free throw up and good on this trip to the Ferris Chevrolet free throw line. What's he at now, Aaron? Six for seven. Is that where we're at? Make seven it seven for eight. For eight. There yeah. we go. <laughs> 
All I know is I got a lot of dots on my uh, score sheet. You got sheet dots and, and I got lines. And so. a lot of his are filled in. <laughs> one thirty to go now in the fourth. Indian Valley with a 20-point lead. Just looking to ride this one out. Mustangs looking for a little uh, positivity coming out of this one. Try to bury a last couple shots here. Moreland's going to drive in. Spin around shot. Tough one. Good defense. Isaac Klasner. Battle for the rebound. Drew Fox had it and tried to save it, but he could not. Fox nearly went careening into the uh, the stands there, and I think his coaches are like, we like the hustle, but please don't hurt yourself in a game that's well decided. And Indian Valley going to call off the dogs as coming back in is Johnny Meekin and Xander Heil. First time in the game for Luke Wells and Delaney Phillips. You know, I, I know, Shannon, you watch a lot of these uh, Indian Valley games here, and, you know, we've seen a few of them ourselves, and it's incredible how they play up and down throughout the season. If they get on a hot run come tournament time, they can go far. Yeah, like I said, they, they've been really streaky this year. and Tonight they're playing really good basketball again, and that's what they're going to do come tournament time. Tournament, it's one and done. So yep. you, you don't get over, so they, they better be prepared at tournament time. How about that hustle play there for uh, Drew Fox as he intercepted the pass and was falling out of bounds, spun around and bounced it off of Landon McPeak, so it's Mustang's ball. Ball gets worked around to Whitman. Three-point shot off back iron. Rebound Matthew Jackson. He's on the low block. Goes back to Whitman. Thought, thought about another three-pointer. Instead, runs into the lane. Step-up shot. No good. Phillips with the rebound for the Braves, and he's tied up, and he's going to head to the free-throw line. I tell you, Matthew Jackson's had a nice little second half here. He's played a good, complete game here. 60-40. to 40, Exactly one minute to go. Substitutions. That looks like Drew's fifth. And that would be why. Yeah, Drew, Drew's been a nice little asset for the, the Mustangs this year. Only a sophomore. You know, last year I think he had some frustration throughout the year. He, he's done a great job this year for the Mustangs, and he, he's going to be a nice uh, a little asset for the Mustangs going forward the next couple of years. There is no lack of hustle when it comes from to uh, Drew Fox, as he has really that's, – that's the one thing he does do very proficiently is that speed and heart and uh, hustle. Yeah, like Shannon say, for a lot of these sophomores, this is a fast game. Ooh, and yeah. when you look at him, he does not look like a sophomore out there at all. He belongs. And like you said, Shannon, we're going to be calling his name uh, quite a few times the next couple of years. Delaney Phillips delivers from the Ferris Chevrolet free throw line. 61-40 to 40 now the score. Watkins going to take a deep three-point shot and bury it. Dylan Watkins gets his first one to go from deep. Nice shot for him. Phillips has it, pushes it up the court. Braves can just dribble it out here. Mustang's still going to try to force a turnover. But it looks like it's going to be an 18-point victory, improving upon their first victory over the Mustangs by about four points. Will the Braves. So they'll sweep the season series with Claymont, and Matthew Jackson going to get called for a foul. And if I'm not mistaken, that is all she wrote for Jackson, he's, and it is. He's going to have to go sit as well. So stepping back to the line will be Landon McPeak. Checking in will be number 25 for the Mustangs. I don't have him. Don't have him. JV, it's Miles Wolf, the freshman. Like you said, you got to love the hustle of Jackson and Drew Fox. All reality, the game is over, and they're not giving up. So no. you got to give a tip of the hat to those two players. Well, that's, that's good uh, future stuff for Claymont basketball, as you mentioned with Jackson. And he is a junior, but he gets one more year. But uh, I'm sorry, with Drew Fox being a sophomore. <laughs> I messed that one up, Shannon. <laughs> Here come the Mustangs down again, 62-43, 15 seconds to go. Step up shot, Moreland, and that might have got tipped by Johnny Meekin. Rebound going to go to Wells, and that's officially going to do it now as the Indian Valley Braves will pick up their 10th win of the season. For the Mustangs, they will fall for the 10th time and win both matchups against their rival. 62-43, going to be your final score from Uricksville. And Aaron Stump, uh, Claymont kept scrapping. There's no doubt about that, but it really seemed like this was a game that Indian Valley got themselves in control of early and never relinquished it. Yeah, two things we talked about. Uh, you know what? Let's interrupt this. Uh, Shannon's got uh, Coach Miller out there. Coach, you guys come away with the big win tonight. First half looked like you played really good basketball. Second half, I think they tested your patience a little bit there in the third quarter. Yeah, we let them get uh, loose for a couple shots. You know, Mooneyham, we knew that, that he could really 
he hit three in the third quarter that we kind of let him get loose for and kind of uh, like gave him a little bit of momentum. But out of the we we closed it out at the end, took care of the ball, knocked down free throws, and um, you know it's something we've been working on a lot in practice with that group that was on the at the end, just and, and close out game. So it's a, a good job of our guys doing that tonight. Congratulations, coach. Thanks, Shannon. Thank you, Shannon, and uh, apologies there as we had some microphone problems on that. I think it's every time someone walking in front of it, maybe, but you got the ge general idea of what uh, Coach Miller said. Overall, excited and happy for uh, his team's performance. That's going to do it for the actual game time, 62-43. Again, the win for Indian Valley. Stick around. We're going to tally up our final stats here and give away our hardware. It's the Mac and Turf Realty Player of the Game and the Ron's Heating and Cooling Defensive Player of the Game. Don't go anywhere. Big Z Sports returns after this. The Fraternal Order of Eagles, Yorksville, Area 2264, is a proud supporter of local school programs and youth programs and local police and fire departments. The Eagles welcome you to enjoy live entertainment, kids' Christmas parties, kids' Halloween parties, and family picnics. To learn more about the Yorksville Eagles, they invite you to stop by and see how they are truly people helping people. Someone you know is already a member. 332 North Main Street in Yorksville, 740-922-9084. Wood Electric has been trusted with all of your electrical needs for over 30 years. They are the place to call for residential, commercial, and industrial work. Wood Electric is available 24 hours a day and ready to help with any electrical problem, outage, or installation. Wood Electric, serving Tuscarawas County and beyond since 1988. Like Wood Electric on Facebook or find them online at woodelectric.net. Is there anything better than high school sports? Hi, this is Dan Hosteller of Ferris Chevrolet Buick Toyota. High school sports brings out the best of our high schools in our communities, and the people at Ferris have always been behind the importance of athletics and academics. Just like we believe in the great cars and trucks that we sell and service every day. Like high school sports, we are a great tradition in the area. Ferris on the Wabash, New Philadelphia. Ron's Heating and Cooling in Denison has been serving this great area since 1977. At Ron's, no matter what your needs, they can handle it. From heating and cooling to standby Generac generators, water heaters, tankless water heaters, mobile home equipment, duct cleaning, and 24-hour no-heat service. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you have to do is call 740-922-5252. Ron's Heating and Cooling proudly supports high school sports and would like to wish best of luck to all local athletes participating this season. PAC Drilling, a family-owned and operated company since 2005 in Bolivar, takes pride in being an economic oil and gas drilling company. PAC's objective is to contribute to American energy independence through profitable development, operation, and marketing of oil and natural gas wells. PAC also employs operating technicians to oversee each and every well drilled to maximize its productivity and longevity. Contact PAC Drilling at PAC drilling.com Back to Eurexville where it's gone final 62-43. Indian Valley picks up the IVC victory away from home and uh, some big time performances. Aaron Stump for the Braves as I go through and uh, tally up some stuff here. Uh, Braden Troyer for the Braves with 12 points for him and 7 for 8 from the free throw line. Very very nice output for him but uh, Leading scorer, if I'm not mistaken, for the Braves, well, it's it's a close toss-up between Tyson Pryor and Reese Colson. They were both battling all night to see who was going to be the one on top. Yeah, I, th I think both those guys, like I said, top scorers, but just played both complete games. Um, you know, I know you got the uh, the line on uh, Reese, mm -hmm. how many rebounds. I mean, that dude played an unbelievable game today and really led the way. And, uh, again, Tyson uh, had a very, very strong first half. And, again, when he got that lead a little bit, again, he's not going to be nearly as effective. Uh, only because, again, you're slowing it down. Tyson actually led the team with 14 points. He hauled in six rebounds, also had a steal and assist. I have two steals, actually, and an assist. Reese Colson, 13 points, eight rebounds, two blocks, two steals, and an assist. He had five offensive rebounds tonight, Aaron. And, There's a difference maker. And, again, I, Coach Watkins talked about it. You know, the, the killer tonight was the, the rebounding opportunities they led up. And, again, uh, he, he by far led the charge uh, on the offensive rebound side, did a great job. Another guy who had a great game, Isaac Klasner. We were calling his name all night. 11 points, 5 assists, 3 rebounds for him. 
he was uh, really orchestrating the uh, the offense well and was really keeping things moving smooth, never panic, and just always knew where he was going to go with the ball. Yeah, he, uh, again, a quiet 11 points. Yeah, uh, again, I had to double low, check. But, again, that's those are the players that just become vital to your team. When you can, you know, score 11 points and really not be noticed, but, again, it's all those other little things <laughs> you do on the defensive end. Again, the help defense. And, and how many times, again, was he drawing the defense to him to open some of his other players? He had some great assists. Uh, again, overall, again, another uh, great effort by him. Benaya Klasner, his brother had six points, uh, hold in two rebounds, a steal, an assist for him. Nice game. Uh, Landon McPeak, a perfect four for four from the Ferris Chevrolet free throw line. Leo Wanger had two points, threw in a couple rebounds, a steal there, and that was pretty much the scoring for Indian Valley. Uh, also, uh, Delaney Phillips coming in there at the end, one for two from the charity stripe. He got a point as well. For the Claymont Mustangs, uh, you know, Graydon Mooneyham ended up kind of catching fire there late. Uh, ended up posting, uh, if I can do my math real quick, 15 points, <laughs> a rebound, and an assist. Uh, Brody Moreland uh, chipped in nine points, or uh, I think I have that listed wrong, but uh, Dylan Watkins also uh, five points for him. Nate Barnaby hitting a couple from deep and some from the floor as well. But the biggest story here is when I'm going down the uh, the, the spot sheet for the Claymont Mustangs, the rebounding battle was just all Braves for the most part. Yeah, uh, you know, a couple things we talked about. You know, again, ev every game it seems like it comes down to free throws, turnovers, and rebounding. And, again, when Indian Valley basically won all three of those contests tonight, and when you – lose all three of them it is hard to overcome and we saw that with uh claymont tonight again i i'm really impressed with the way indian valley played today a complete game on defense i thought they extended the defense really well they boxed out well again claymont got one shot and it was done their transition defense was good tonight and uh, like shannon said they're up and down tonight they were definitely up absolutely they were up well uh that's all for the stats side of this as we wait now for Shannon Thomas to bring out the McInturf Realty Player of the Game and the Ron's Heating and Cooling Defensive Player of the Game. But uh, Aaron Stump, i got to say, uh, we were treated to another great one here, and uh, we'll see who was the one who kind of stood out a little bit more on both uh, for both the offense and the defense for both these sides. It's going to be a tough choice. Yeah, uh, again, when, when you have this many players scoring points, again, you had players uh, 14 points, 13 points, 12 11 and and uh again that that is a complete team win and it's it's always ha nice having the, that many uh scores in double digits and uh, that way if you got one guy struggling one night you got other guys to pick them up so uh again uh, great great effort by the entire team absolutely we'll take our final time out of the night and move into our final segment as we will give away our hardware stick around and hear from who's going to be our award winners tonight with big z sports right after this the certified public accountants at Needenthal & Company believe in the value of relationships. Needenthal & Company has been in business for over 50 years in your community, helping individuals and businesses grow. Needenthal & Company can help manage and prepare your payroll, plan your estate, and prepare your business and personal income taxes. Stop in to the Needenthal facility on North Wooster Avenue in Dover and become a valued client today. First National Bank of Denison appreciates the hard work and dedication area athletes exhibit to be the best they can be for their team. We follow that same philosophy with our customers, working hard to build personal relationships and making our services convenient. The First National Bank of Denison's community involvement is important to us and we love supporting our local schools. The First National Bank of Denison with offices in Denison, Dover, Janate and Hutton, South Broadway and Shunbrunn in New Philadelphia. We have our roots where others have their branches. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. The Fraternal Order of Eagles, Yorksville, Area 2264, is a proud supporter of local school programs and youth programs and local police and fire departments. The Eagles welcome you to enjoy live entertainment, kids' Christmas parties, kids' Halloween parties, and family picnics. To learn more about the Yorksville Eagles, they invite you to stop by and see how they are truly people helping people. Someone you know is already a member. 332 North Main Street in Yorksville, 740-922-9084. 
Hi, this is Gian McInturf. For the past 30 years, the residents in and around Tuscarawas County have made the call to the realtors and staff at McInturf Realty for buying and selling of residential and commercial properties. We truly live in a great community, and in all those communities, there's nothing better than high school basketball. For myself and all the agents and staff at McInturf Realty, we would like to wish all the area athletes good luck this season and make the call to McInturf Realty at 330-364-SOLD or find us online at McInturfRealty.net. Located in the rolling hills of Holmes County, Kime Home Center is the destination and trusted source for your home, building, and woodworking needs. And we are now offering appliances. At Kime, you'll find major kitchen and laundry appliance brands such as General Electric, Whirlpool, Speed Queen, and much more. Our sales and service teams can help with product selection, delivery, installation, ongoing maintenance, and repair. Give us a call or stop by today. Kime, built on trust since 1911. Sports on 99.9 WTUZ. One final time from Uricksville, the Indian Valley Braves pick up the 62-43 victory over the Claymont Mustangs. Now time to give away our hardware. The Rons heating and cooling defensive player of the game. This one going to go to a player. Led the team in defensive rebounds, also had a steal, a block, and was just really locking down the perimeter at uh, pretty much the entire game, uh, Aaron Stump. Why don't you go ahead and let the people know who it is? Yeah, this this was a tough, uh, again, great team defense in this, but tonight uh, we're going to give it to Mr. Tyson Pryor uh, for Indian Valley. Uh, great job tonight, Tyson. Um, again, uh, great job locking down, great job boxing out. Is that something you guys work on practice on a uh, regular basis, or are you guys just naturally good at this? No, we work on it every day. <laughs> Every, so, how much does Coach Miller drive that into you guys to make sure you get it right? About 24-7. <laughs> so i got to ask this. Again, I've seen you guys play a couple times this year. You've played really well, and it seems like this team struggled. Tonight you guys came out firing, and it was all go, go, go. What's the secret sauce tonight, man? What made it go? Just a rivalry game. We had great energy from the time we got off the bus to the time we got on the court, and it just didn't stop. And uh, Tyson, I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not, but in your last eight games now, you guys are 6-2. and two. You've really picked up steam here as the season's rolling on. How's everybody feeling right now? It just seems like everything's rolling in the right direction. We've had a lot of ups and downs, but it's definitely getting better, yes, sir. We're improving every day. So this is Coach Miller's second season. And, again, when you got a new coach last year, he's got a new system. He, you know, has got his way of doing things. How have things gotten easier this year being his second season? We just got used to the offense that he runs and the defense. It was kind of a change, but we got used to it real quick. Sure. Good. Tyson, can we expect a similar amount of hustle on the defensive side coming into the next game? Yes, sir. All right. That sounds good. We like to hear that. Well, that's your Ron's Heating and Cooling defensive player of the game, Tyson Pryor. Great job, Tyson, and uh, thank him so much for his time. He'll get a nice shirt from uh, Ron's Heating and Cooling. Next up, it's time for the McInturf Realty player of the game. And, i got to tell you, Aaron, you're, you're going to laugh at this. I have to make mention of this. I've actually played basketball against this guy, not in games that count, and uh, he would have double what he had tonight if he was going against me. But uh, our McIntyre Realty player of the game, it's Reese Colson for the Indian Valley Bla Braves. Reese, 13 points, 8 rebounds, 2 blocks, 2 steals. You also had an assist, and you hauled in 5 offensive rebounds. Tell me what kind of went into this game. You know, when you started off, you were just on fire. You were just feeling it tonight. Yeah, I mean, we knew we wanted to come out and win. You know, Claymont's obviously our rival, and we just wanted to come out and stick it to them. How, how much of a difference does that give you guys? How much of a fire does that give you guys when you're playing your rival? Oh, I mean, it lights the biggest fire you can imagine inside of us. Again, one of the things we noticed, again, with Coach Miller, it's his second year, and, again, it, it's tough when you bring in a new coach, a new offense, and a new staff. How has it been different this year with Coach Miller and trying to blend a, a team together? I feel like this year is definitely going a lot smoother. Things have been blending a lot more well together. Um, we're finally starting to get used to what he wants from us as a coach and how we should perform as a team. Reese, i got to ask you about one specific play. We saw you get the ball on the baseline. You went up, and I think you were trying to throw it down with both hands. You got fouled, somehow stuck with it, got it off the glass and in. That's, that's very impressive for a high school player to do, something that you've worked on, I'm sure. Yeah, of course. Thank you. So when you guys step into playoffs again, we talked to uh, Mr. Pryor a little bit. We've seen you, we've seen you guys a couple games. You guys play really well, and you guys seem to struggle in there. Tonight, it was all gas and all go. What was the secret sauce tonight that just made it happen? I don't know. I think we just came out all fired up, uh, ready to play, and it's 
all there is to it. So there is one more question i got to ask, and all the WTUZ listeners really want to hear. You, you've played ball against <laughs> Nick McWilliams here. Uh-huh. How would you rate <laughs> Nick oh, you don't McWilliams' need to game? That one. <laughs> Hey, I'll give him a seven and a half out of ten. Seven and a half. Well, well now he's just lying because we're giving him <laughs> giving him an award and a shirt from McIntyre Realty and a free combo meal to uh, my burger joint. But thank you, Reese, You're and congratulations, congratulations for a great game. Again, great Reese Colson, our McIntyre Realty Player of the Game, and one of the big components of a major win for the Braves, 62-43 over the Mustangs. That will officially now wrap up our t- or for tonight's broadcast. A huge shout out to all of our sponsors for bringing this. Uh, Bringing this broadcast tonight, a big thank you to Claxton Communications and Mary Alice back there from the PAC Drilling Studios. Nick McWilliams wrapping up another broadcast. Be sure to stay tuned with Big Z Sports for our next broadcast. You can always stay up to date on our social media platforms. Good night and good weekend, Z Country. Thanks for listening to tonight's presentation of Big Z Sports and Claxon Communication High School play-by-play action. Be sure to subscribe to Big Z Sports on YouTube, follow Big Z Sports on Facebook, on Twitter, at Big underscore Z Sports. For the best coverage of high school sports, there's only one Big Z Sports. Big Z Sports.